Welcome to Nursing Simplified, the smart way to survive nursing school. In today's episode, we are going to revisit the method that you can use to answer prioritization questions on any exam quickly, easily, and correctly every single time. That's right. Many of you asked for a follow-up to my previous video, so here it is. If you haven't watched my first video on prioritization questions, click here to do that now. That will give you the solid foundation you need to understand this method. Once you're done, come on back to this video for more content and more practice. As always, if you would take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. That way, my content will be available to more people just like you. So thank you and let's dive in. Let's do a quick recap of what we learned in the previous video. First, you need to determine a question is a priority question. So focus on those keywords, words such as first, most, initial, and best are some of the words that will help you distinguish a priority question from something else. Once you have determined that it is a priority question, use the simplified Maslow approach, breaking the triangle down into just three segments, physiological, safety, and psych. When you're looking at the physiologic needs, to prioritize answer items, use A, B, C, D in order. That is airway, breathing, circulation, and decreased mental status. When you come across a pain item, remember that it only trumps other physiologic needs if it is related to loss of limb or loss of life. Lastly, when you wind up with multiple options in the same category, prioritize between them using the same steps. Now, Maslow's hierarchy has five sections, but remember, we've simplified it by condensing it into just three, physiological, safety, and psych. And then off to the side, we're gonna keep pain in the back of our minds. So remember that A, B, C, D, organizational mnemonic in that order, airway, breathing, circulation, and decreased level of consciousness. And remember, when we go through these, it will be in that order, A, B, C, D. Pain is a physiological need as well, but how do we know how to categorize it in its level of importance? Well, it would come in after your A, B, C, Ds, but remember, if it's related to loss of limb or loss of life, it would become a top priority. If we don't have any physiological needs, then we focus on the safety needs of the patient. Fall prevention is the big one in this category, but there are others. And lastly, if we don't have physiologic or safety needs, then we would move on to the psychological needs. Let's go through some questions and see how we do using this method. A nurse is caring for four clients and is preparing to do his initial rounds after receiving report from the ongoing nurse. Which client should the nurse assess first? Before we go through these options, if you'd like to pause the video here and see how you do on your own, go ahead and do that now. Option A, a 65-year-old female client with new onset type 2 diabetes who is scheduled to be discharged today. So discharging a patient will almost always be about safety. Can the patient care for themselves at home? Is this a safe discharge? So when we look at this option, we know it's safety. It's our only option at this moment, so we'll mark it as our priority. Option B, a 35-year-old male with a tracheostomy and copious secretions. When we think of a patient with a tracheostomy who has copious secretions, we're concerned that those secretions might block the patient's airway. So option B is about airway which is physiological. This option now becomes our priority. Option C, 
a 19-year-old with a femur fracture who is scheduled for his first physical therapy session this morning, who rang his call bell to say he has four out of 10 pain. Option C is one of those pain options that we need to evaluate. We already have a physiologic choice that is related to airway. The only way this would become our priority is if the pain is related to loss of limb or loss of life. This is a patient with a femur fracture, so we would expect him to have pain. It is not related to loss of limb or loss of life. Therefore, B remains our priority. Option D, a 76-year-old incontinent female client with a pressure ulcer that needs a dressing change. This option is about safety. We change the patient's dressing to encourage wound healing and prevent infection. So knowing this is a safety option, B remains our priority, and this is our correct answer. Well, let's move on to our next question. The nurse enters a semi-private room and finds a client lying on the floor. Which of the following actions should the nurse perform first? Go ahead and pause the video now if you would like to try to work this one out on your own. Otherwise, let's look at the options one by one. A, call for help to get the client back in bed. Well, this is clearly about safety. It's our only option so far, and therefore it becomes our priority. Option B, ask the client's roommate if they saw what happened. Well, this one's about safety as well. The roommate's account of what happened could be very helpful as it might give us an idea of injuries and things we could do to prevent future falls. For now, we have two safety options. We will make them both our priority. Option C, assist the client back to bed. Another clear safety option as we want the patient to get back to the bed safely. But now we have three safety options. We'll go ahead and mark them all as priority. Option D, establish whether the client is responsive. Well, thank goodness we now have a physiologic priority. We want to see if the patient lost consciousness from the fall or if the reason they fell was from a change in mental status. Once we find this out, then we can act accordingly to get the patient care and then worry about safety. Therefore, D becomes our priority and that is our correct answer. Let's look at our next one. A nurse enters a room and finds a patient lying face down on the floor and bleeding profusely from a gash in the head. Which action should the nurse perform first? Go ahead and pause the video now if you'd like to try to work this one out on your own. Otherwise, let's look at the options one by one. Option A, determine the level of consciousness. Well, Sure, we would want to determine the level of consciousness. We even just talked about that in the previous question. This is a physiologic need, and for now it's our only option. So we will mark this as our priority. Option B, push the call button for help. This is again similar to the previous question. We decided this was about safety, and safety does not trump physiologic needs, so a remains our priority. Option C, apply pressure to the laceration in an effort to slow the bleeding. This is another physiologic need. Remember the A, B, C, Ds, airway, breathing, circulation, and decreased level of consciousness. Bleeding is related to circulation and circulation starts with C, which comes before D for decreased level of consciousness. Therefore, C becomes our new priority. Option D, go out in the hall to get the nursing assistant to stay with the client 
while the nurse calls the physician. This is another safety option, and this will never trump our circulation option. Therefore, C remains our priority, and that is our correct answer. Okay, let's move on to our last practice question. A nurse is working in the triage area of the emergency department when four patients show up simultaneously. Which patient will the nurse bring to the physician first? As always, go ahead and pause the video now if you'd like to try to work this out on your own. Otherwise, let's look at the options one by one. Option A. A 49-year-old male with a history of generalized anxiety disorder with a respiratory rate of 28, heart rate of 90, blood pressure 132 over 78, pulse ox of 100, who's complaining of intense fear. This patient has generalized anxiety disorder. And when you couple that with these vital signs, it sounds like a panic attack. Um, although these are extremely frightening and uncomfortable for the patient, it does have to do with psych. So this is a psych answer, but it's our only option so far, so it will be our priority. Option B, a seven-year-old female who presents with her mother after an automobile accident with a three-inch laceration to her forearm. This is a bleeding question, and remember, bleeding questions always fall under circulation. This is a physiologic option, so it beats out our psych option and becomes our priority. Option C, a 36-year-old female with 10 out of 10 pain to her right hip after falling off of her bicycle. Okay, pain. We knew we would get to this eventually. But is this pain related to loss of limb or loss of life? No, it's not. It's expected pain after an injury. So B, which is our circulation option, remains our priority. Option D, a 52-year-old male who is complaining of 8 out of 10 generalized head pain who states, this is the worst headache of my life. Okay, yet another pain option. This patient is complaining of the worst headache of his life. Now, what condition typically presents with a patient reporting the worst headache of their life? Think about it for a minute. This is a classic sign of a ruptured brain aneurysm. So now we have to decide if it's related to loss of limb or loss of life. Well, the chances of surviving a ruptured brain aneurysm are only one in two. And the odds of surviving without severe brain damage are only one in four. So I would say this is definitely risk for loss of life. Therefore, option D becomes our priority and it is our correct answer. And there you have it. Today we talked about the systematic way to answer priority questions correctly every time. Keep practicing on your own using this method and soon enough, you will be a master. But for now, remember, you are beautiful, you are needed, you are loved, you are strong, and most of all, dear friends, you are enough. If you liked this video or you learned something, please subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss what's coming next. Now go out there and be the amazing nurse you were meant to be. And remember, nursing is a work of heart. See you in the next video.